Hello, everyone. Steve here. Showing you Raid Shadow Legends. I wonder if I got a Raid Shadow Legends, I'll actually, like, sponsor it. Join Raid Shadow Legends now and get 20 gold, free three champions, and uh, a dwarf that looks like you. You know. <laughs> mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Nice relaxing music for a midday Sunday stream. And a sugar-free energy drink. Cheers. My friend's favourite monster. I think he says he likes... Well, he says he likes the white one. I can't remember if he said it's his favourite. I think so. As always, I'm going to simulate at once. Stop simulation because it's slightly... So the line doesn't change as much now. It still changes a little bit after simulating, and I don't know why. Like, you can tell here on the door frame. When I simulate, look how dark that gets. When I stop simulating, it gets much lighter. But it's not as drastic as it was. That's good, at least. I forget you guys get laggy when I... There you go. Oh, wait. Hold on a minute. Oh, wait, I didn't put the fridge in yet, did I? It's just in Blender. All right, all right. So I'm not going to let's texture things right now, but I will UV map. I wouldn't mind the idea of opening the fridge and having, like, Simpsons Easter eggs in there, but that's all good to say now. When I'm like nowhere near that stage, you know what I mean? Uh, so I'll probably stick this way around. And then we want to just connect from three areas. So we probably want to do something like this. Three areas? We want to disconnect from four areas like this. Although I'd rather wrap it around here and have this part the cutoff bit. Uh, so the best way to do that would be just select one edge that wraps. And then select three edges on here so it only gets from here. Making sure we have this come all the way around. Like that. Mark seam. If I then I won't unwrap it yet, but I'll show it in a minute. In here, I don't mind it doing it the other way, because it's a much taller bit. It's fine there. Uh, I need it to do this, 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 this. And then this one I can do the other way where it comes from the back. Mm, I think, I still think the best way to do it is like this though, uh, where I'd instead do it from here. So we get it to connect from the side here. And then we just disconnect. Probably one of the top ones so that we don't see it. Jesus. Oh my God. Ooh. Is it necessary to have a very good level of mathematics? to develop games depends are you talking about being a programmer or are you talking about being a artist if you talk about being a programmer it definitely helps even even with some technical art it helps like if we look at oh i've got not got an example in this scene but if we look at like the mathematics involved when i was making my water shader this divides multiplies adds subtracts um and they all like it's very small mathematics in um or at least my node systems in art because it's just usually like oh for example, this value is going between minus one and one. I want it to be going between zero and one. So how do I fix that? Let's plus one. So it's going between zero and two. Then let's divide it by two. So it's now going between zero and one. Does that make sense? That's really useful information when making like a time node, right? 
So if we go, if it lets me, I want to right click and create a material, but oh, it's because I've got something in here. There you go. So let's do an example, right? If I want a node that glows on, off, on, off, there's some maths involved in this. Now, do I have to understand how all of it works? Not necessarily. If we get the material, we go just time fade. And we go time fine. So what this is basically going to do is it's going to make the value go between. So a sign will make it go between minus one and one. Like this. So flash on. Real time is not turned on. To get a flash off, flash on, flash off, flash on, flash off. Uh, so using maths, we can already change what's going on here. This is going very fast. So how do I slow this down? we divide it because dividing something is going to make the values go between each other longer kind of so if we divide that by two it's going to half the time it's taking between going with those two values right so let's divide it by five and now we're going to have quite a slow fade out and fade in now the problem here is we're staying in black for a really long time the reason for that is because we're going between minus one and one because of the sign node now as i said earlier how do we resolve that using mathematics we plus one so if you, it, it's a shame you can't see the maths actually here but so if we add one this now will be making it go between zero and two because we're at minus one and one plusing one to all of that is going to make that minus one a zero and that like one a two so now it's zero and two so what this will look like is it will go white for a really long time and then fade back down and instantly go back up but it's going to be going above that one value for a really long time for in fact 50 percent of the time because it's going between zero and two now this is fine if you're doing it into an emissive and you want it to get really really emissive because what emissives do so if i were to multiply this by 10 now this is now going to be making it go between zero and 20. see how bright it gets you can see the glow coming off it right However, if I wanted to go between 0 and 1, because I don't want to exceed those limits, there's a couple ways you could do it. The best way is just divide it by 2, right? Because 0 and 2 divided by 2 is 0 and 1. So now it will reach its peak of brightness at the tip, and it will start coming back down instantly. Come back up, reaching that tip of 1, and then coming back down from 1. Like that. Then you can say, oh, now I want it to glow to 20. So this is, for me, this is the best way to do it because now I'm at such a standard value, zero and one. Very easy, very binary. Uh, I can then multiply this. So if we wanted to go between zero and 20, multiply it by 20 because that zero can't be multiplied by 20 because zero, so it's going to stay at zero. And then that one value is going to be 20. So now it's going to be going to zero and 20. I don't know why I plugged it in. It doesn't matter. I'm just going to preview it. And it's much easier to control that so do you need to know maths yes and no if you're not going to be a technical artist which i i know some jobs consider this technical art some jobs that say this is something you should know but a, a lot of jobs i looked at were called this technical art in fact every anywhere i've worked because it's technical art uh so if you're not looking to be a technical artist if you are looking to be an artist no you don't need maths but if you are looking to be a technical artist yes you do but it's usually simpler than being a programmer and then when you're a programmer is usually quite a lot involved with being with knowing maths but uh, programmers may disagree with me on this usually it's still simple maths it's just a lot of simple maths like a lot of divides adds multiplies uh, all of this stuff it's usually just a lot of it merged into a lot of like and it looks really complex that could be incorrect i'm not a programmer but that's always been my view on it whenever i see programming um i hope that helps <laughs> white cube i wonder what an unwrap of this would look like now yeah i had a feeling to do that oh, wait what is this part what is this part Oh, right. I mean, then they cut across the uh, entire thing. There you go. It's got a cut here, yeah? That matches up. 
cool. Nice, that's very good. Cool. Well, I'm wrap these separate things. Nice. Oh, hold on a minute. Where's the top of this gone? Okay, so those are unwrapped, which is super easy. Uh, this, so I'll do this, 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 oops, oh yeah, I got it. This, 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 and this. And I think it's just a mark seam that should somewhat unwrap, yeah. But will it be better as an angle based? Hmm. Hmm. Kind of the same. I could cut it out into separate pieces every time it curves to possibly get a better unwrap. But that means we're gonna have a lot of cuts on it i think i'd rather just stick with this and hope for the best in the actual uh texturing i think i'd rather that anyway went for white box to uh reply oh yeah that really helps or oh can you explain a little bit more that's fine I mean, if we could conform more, I think I'd prefer that because I'm going to make everything else conform more. So that's just that, that, that. Very simple. Uh, actually, I say very simple. Come from the back, so that way when it does unwrap, we are, um, we won't see the seam at the back. Very, very important. Try to get your seam at the back as often as you can. The reason for this is because if you're not going to see that, you'll have this nice mesh that you can look from any angle and you won't see a texture seam because it's at the back. If you put your texture seam at the front, you're going to have a seam there. Now, you can avoid seeing a seam in lots of different ways and it's usually not too bad to use yourself as a painter, but there's always the possibility of a seam being caused, especially when baking lighting because you can have your light map slightly cause a lighting issue at seams. Yeah. Ooh, why do circles look like that? They still look like that. Hold on a minute. They're perfect circles. Oh, there you go. Cool. Get the two front bits now. These. How do I want to wrap these? We could do one from the front here, here. Spit my screen beautiful always spit on your screen to get that gamer gunk in there and it really brings like <laughs> the flavor <laughs> that's disgusting really <laughs> makes your gameplay like spot on no see i think that's a bad idea i think making this seam where we have this divot like where you put your hand on this grab it Making the seam there is probably the best thing to do, and then we'll isolate it, and we'll do it at the bottom of the top. So I think the wrap around is going to be easier from there. Uh, I'm going to see how that works. Oh, not very good. Much better, much better. I think that would be fine. I could be wrong. I probably should quickly set up a UV grid. Okay, cool. 
Let me do here. And new base color image. These. Let me do here. We should be able to see that. Yeah, that looks pretty good. I'm not upset about that. Hey, let a board has a game. We're doing your favorite UV mapping. With today's sponsor, Raid Shadow Legends. Cool. Not cool. Meep. Hey, Pixel Tuna. How's it going, man? Hey, man. Ah. Ooh, terrible. Terrible, terrible, terrible. Better. Way better. Okay. Separate out the parts that we know is unwrapped, because then we could just do a layout afterwards. Well, it was called laying out in um, Maya. Nice looking fridge. Cheers, fam. Trying to practice my drawing. Nice. One day I'll practice drawing again. I actually found uh, my drawing kit uh, yesterday, because I was cleaning out a lot of stuff yesterday. That's why I didn't stream. I literally didn't get back on my computer until 2 a.m. Because I was busy uh, cleaning things. Oh my god, Adam's here. Where have you been? <laughs> I swear it's been like a year. I should have just been like, Adam? Who's Adam? Never heard of him before. Made it feel real bad. <laughs> Job staff, woman issues. And moving into my own place, etc, etc. Are you in the bath while watching me? Because I remember that being a very crucial part of your watching experience. Yeah, I've been pretty good. I landed a job. I can't remember if you were here when I got the job. If you weren't here then, it's definitely been over a year. Oh wait, so I did something wrong. I need to do this there you go. I could actually just um duplicate these and have them share one texture, but we are lazy, so I'm not going to do that. I can show you where my scene came along if you want. So we're in the Simpsons scene today, which I don't know if you've seen this. And it's really laggy on stream annoyingly. Like it's fine on my end, but I've had to reduce our screen percentage to 45. Otherwise it gets really, really laggy. I don't think OBS likes something that basically uses ray tracing as its uh, fundamental rendering while streaming. But we're just putting some of the kitchen together now. Limited on buffs. Ah, oh, yeah, I've heard you've got a new job. Confidential stuff. What can you say what you're working in? I am working on two different games. One's a realistic sports game. And one is a stylized game. I don't really know how much you can say about it. It's got It's gone in a very different direction since development stages. So, yeah. I'm a lead artist, though. Because we have such a small company, I only have to... I, I literally there's two artists underneath me that it's just me and one of them's a concept artist so it's three artists it's a very small company but it's fun i enjoy myself my boss contacts me on the weekends to do work for him and sometimes i say yes uh so i must enjoy it if i'm willing to work some of my weekend away he usually gives me time in lieu um but 
But this weekend I had to deny because I was busy doing stuff. That's always good. Sorry, I was really thinking my feelings as well, as you probably could tell. Yeah, I mean, it's been really good. I've enjoyed myself. I unfortunately can't show you stuff, but I can show you my last scene, which I still need to finish. I, I keep going on about this. That I need to finish it. So I, I moved my old scene all the way over to UE5 um, because I thought it would be better. And I think today, at the end of the day, I think anything I render should just be in the newer software. One, because the newer software gives you just better benefits anyway. But I should definitely... Um definitely be looking to get every guy can in ue5 i kind of want to get some old scenes in ue5 as well glad you found a place you're happy at man i work over some weekends myself but only to make the following week a bit less stressful work wise and more laid back if that makes sense oh yeah 100 my my boss is very very god he's just very trusting of me in general it's great like he he, he trusts me way more than i think he should um but i mean he doesn't let it it's not a bad thing. But I'm enjoying it. And like, yeah, you just trust me a hell of a lot. I mean, I got lead art position fairly quickly. That's how much you trust me. So that's cool. Knowing that I'm at a place where my boss has complete confidence in me is reassuring. What is this one? So one thing that annoys me in Blender. What is that? Oh, right. Hmm probably just do this 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 this, this. mark seam and then i'm wrap oh don't unwrap it all let me see that and then i'm wrap well then we slit it all and then i'm pretty sure if i pack islands it won't rescale it for me what is these all right that is that if we go Got a blend uh got any blender tips? I know you've been using it for a while and they've been trying to get a lot of us to move over. Comfortable with it. Are you coming from Maya? Because one tip you could actually use is actually changing all your controls to Maya controls. I don't do this because I like using even in video games, I'll try my best to not rebind keys to like I'm familiar with. I'll just learn. Uh same with art software and whatever i'll just learn what it is but you can do that to make it a bit more comfortable with this transition because my friend does that um, and he says it's great um i mean the biggest tip if you're coming from maya is learn your way around modifiers if you've never used 3ds max which also has modifiers over from max oh okay 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 so you know about modifiers i've set some hotkeys to what i use to max just so i can go between them I think the biggest tip I can use is just try to use Blender for all of its advantages that it provides. Like, uh, that's something that's taken me a long time to really adjust to. But there's just so many tools. And pressing F3. If you don't know what how to get to something and you know it by name, F3, I don't know, marks... Oh, oh I'm in object mode. Uh, there you go mark seam you got like subdivide like and it'll show you the shortcut on it so yeah so all about learning the shortcuts really so let me uh get back into here so i'm pretty sure yeah as you can see like that's got high density that's got lower density uh the way to resolve is i could unwrap it all but then i'm gonna get this really weird unwrap i mean it all technically works fine why is it so small over here though that can't be the same resolution as that, is it? Learn that Blender's not got the best unwrapping tools. They're really good, but they're not the best. Um, I mean, some ways I could just like scale things down to match it. I think the fridge is just so big though. I'm just curious to why it looks like this when it's done. Pack. Is there really not a pack island option though that determines its scale? Uh, I don't want to manually do it. That's why I just want to do this. But this gives me so little room to work with. 
And then angle based is just completely messed up. Look at that. What is it doing? And that looks fine, but everything else is just so small. So I feel like that's completely wasted space. Oh, that's the interior, right? Uh, what was I pack it now after the rescaling it all? Wow! It's really not liking it. Uh, I might have to just do, just do stuff manually then. Great. I love doing manual unwrapping. So yeah, let us look at the best manual unwrapping, but you get used to it. Let's turn you off. Let me just see what I'm doing. What is that? That does not look very good. That's this? That's what it looks like? Mm. Should I have left it with... You know what? We'll be cheeky and we'll just go cutting on each end. So where I've got to cut there, I'll just cut in each way. That will give me the easiest looking result. Oh yeah, let me show you my other scene. What it looks like in um, UE5. I don't know if I've got any messages on LinkedIn. Nope. Haha, <laughs> me? Get any messages from possible jobs? Hey, Mustafa. Um, Mustafa, how's it going, man? All right. So I've said I never see this as my as a like the most amazing scene, but I did enjoy some of the stuff I learned from it. And um, learning about lines also is good for packing. You should not use default blender packing tool. I know. I know. To be fair, you say that 90, 90 to 95% of the time, I think the packet tool is fine. You should see some of the results you get. Uh, I've got from it. Um, but I definitely know there's way better tools that you can... Uh, I just don't want to buy them. I just Unless my job supplies them, it just feels like I'm wasting money. Better if you set your LinkedIn profile to open for work, you'd get a lot of recruiters. I think it is open to work. You, you'll, you'd be very surprised how little uh, companies care about me. Uh, as I've said prior, I applied for like over. UV Toolkit is good. Um, I've applied for over 200 jobs and I didn't get a single interview for one of them. So I've got more stuff to show on my portfolio now. Oh, you want to see parallax occlusion mapping? Look at this. I love parallax occlusion mapping. Look how thick. I ignore the rug. That's not finished. The rugs are just placeholder that I've just been too lazy to actually do. And I was like using it as decals as well. I think it's free too. Oh, maybe I'll get it. I didn't realize it was free. Yeah, you go. I'll show you this room. For some reason, this scene runs fine without being laggy on stream. I mean, I'm I'm not at a hundred. Hundred. Yeah, that still runs fine. This is probably my favorite room, especially from like this angle here. Make sure the lighting is working. Lumen is very strange because if it has conflicting lighting setups, let's see, it will change. The, even though I've reapplied it all, it will change the way it reflects lighting. So I'll disable and re-enable this one and the lighting comes back to normal. Mind blowing work. Thanks, Blood Splat Blade. That came out of nowhere. Great stuff, man. So nice. You guys are so nice. You always compliment my work. But yeah, this is probably my favorite looking room because I just love the way the lighting bounce. I think it's super cool. And then we got our last room. Which is definitely a much more softer lighting setup, which I've done intentionally. Just because we got the lanterns in, I've sort of set it up to be a much softer lit um, place. Come along really nicely. Looks sick. Thanks, man. Search for average island scale. Is that actually a thing? Oh, that is a thing, isn't it, right? Oh, whoops. Average. Oh, I knew about that. I'd just forgotten. That sounds like I'm putting down your hard work or telling me how to start. No, no, I, I, I do remember that. I've just, for some reason, forgotten. Perfect. And then if we pack it, it still sucks. <laughs> Damn it. Uh, it's better, and it'd be easier to move around, but... Well, you know what? If we pack and we increase pack and we increase this because it's got no value right now, that's way too much. That's probably enough. I don't need to squeeze everything in to try to scale it up. 
Average Island Scale has become one of my favorites since I discovered it. Yeah, I don't know why I haven't used it. I haven't used, I knew about it, but I haven't used it in ages. To be fair, like I said, Blender actually does often give me good results, so I don't have to fix things. It's just unfortunate that right now it's not giving me the best results. So I pop this down here and scale it to fit this area. Now, I don't mind scaling some of these up because they are going to be pictures and stuff. So I don't mind a little bit of extra detail in them. Drag this down here. All right. Just over here. This one's very long, isn't it? Ooh, yuckers. All right, so what if I... I could put it up here and scale from here. Which isn't terrible. We've still got a lot of dead space. The video game. Um, I mean, I could probably... I could probably get a way of scaling this down and popping it like in here. Because I only did a rubber bit in here, which I doubt you're going to see very much. Similar with this. No idea what this is. Oh, that was clearly part of something and I've moved it. Part of this. Ah, I see. I hate that Blender does that. It doesn't like make the islands an actual island. You know what I mean? It's very annoying. So then I can scale up a little bit more. Now, something I could do that'd be very daring is scale down the interiors. Because if I never open the fridge, the interiors, I would never actually need to have big. So I think I can go, I, I can get behind scaling them down and trying to find a better position for them. Like here'd be really good. And then if I could, I'd cut off this part or do this here. Like that. How do you edit collision shape in Unreal? Unity allows you to just move the vertices. Collision shape, uh, lots of different ways. So in Unreal, actually I'll show you the other environment because for some reason the other environment works better. Ask you what's to buy it for you. Our workspace us with add one, add, oh, on, sorry. Essentially that costs uh, workflow, to, uh, tempo or whatever is a small amount for them. If it helps. You say that, it takes them so long. I, I, you know, they're a very small team, so I don't blame them. But it's like I asked for a controller to test out a scene because I knew they'd want me to show it to publishers running around using a controller. They, I asked nine days ago on a Friday. They finally said on Friday, the week later, so two days ago. Oh, yeah, we'll ask about the controller. <laughs> I'm like, come on, man. I know that they're like, if they don't have contact with the main boss, he, they can't thingy it, but... Oh, it takes so long. And then I had to show off the scene to some publishers. I shouldn't say that. Well, maybe that's fine. It's not NDA showing, telling you I'm sure I had to show some stuff off to, uh, at work. I just don't, I just can't tell you who. Uh, but I had to show some stuff off and then I couldn't show them with a controller running, uh, with running around with a controller because I didn't have a controller because uh, it still not sent me one. I actually fixed up some controllers recently. I put my i found my old xbox 360 controller and i put it in like a bleach bath to try to clear up some of the color the discoloration on it so it looks pretty good now it's not completely white but it's definitely way more white than it used to be um it's a collision ship is the entire ship with the mass i just want to have the ship hole as a collider to try so if you come into here and you grab your um you can make your collision shape in maya blender 3ds max and import it look up a youtube video on abstex i know you have to set it as a specific name next time i'm just taking yours well i was here doing it at my house but i didn't have the controller i only found my 360 controller yesterday you need uv pack master I mean, you're not wrong. You say this though, but like I said, 95% of the time, my UVs come out fine. I never usually have to... Uh, think so, I, I... If you just write in custom collision box UE4, someone will show you how to do it. Or UE5, probably UE4. But let me show you how to do it manually if you want to. So if you grab your asset... And we go collision, you can... Well, so there's a couple of different ways you can do stuff. So you can... Look at our collision. How do I look at my collision in UE5? How do I look at my collision? Collision. Collision. 
It must be that one. So I must have it on complex right now. I swear UE5 looks different for all of this. There you go. So if we go to project default, that's what it imported as, or that's what it's generating. If I go collision, remove collision, there you go. Collision. I don't know. Oh, there you go. Oh, okay. That's what I'm looking for. Auto convex. You can then turn up its quality in here. Click apply. And it'll try to generate a collision for you. Now, if there's a certain part you obviously just want to have collision for, what you can do instead is collision. Yes. Wait. No. Remove collision. There you go. Go into here. So undid turning it back to project default there you go you can go add box and then you can start moving around your collision to fit the area you want that collision so if i go like this pull it over to here pull it out oh my god pull it out you can then copy paste uh, you can oh 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 left click drag to duplicate now if i want to start making the legs it's basically just like kind of using bsps i guess or using just boxes in the engine to block out something so essentially what you're doing for some reason though it's my scale on a lock it's really jumpy maybe my assets just really small and i don't realize it it's not about the size it's about the quality and then yeah put that in where you need it Drag out, rotate around, rotate up. Oh wait, it's already rotated that way. I don't need to rotate that way. Pull that over, rotate it back, pull it up. Doesn't matter if it collides at the top because it's already got collision there. Pull that over here. Why is it on a object move and not a world move? I can't remember how to put it on a world move. Oh well. But yeah, and then you basically just make up the shape yourself in the unreal engine the way i said in then it sounded like ea sports ea sports it's in the game put this over here and do this and boom if i go into our collision now we'll have this collision set up for it super basic preferably what you want to do because the less collisions you have the better performance you'll have so this versus a complex one is going to be way better performance wise but yeah it's just time consuming Oh, yeah, this us show you the outside of the ship. And this is the outside. We've got, like, a little seating area over here. Got this little front bit of all this bit here. It looks very cool when you're, like, in here looking out. Because you get all that lighting effect from the lumen. And then our main angle is from over here, where we take a picture of the ship. Cool. Wow, she really reflects that wall. Oh, my God. All right. Looks hella epic. Thanks, man. It took a long long enough time, so... You got Adam. I'll get your opinion on this. What do you feel to people who post basically level design work and then say that they made that thing? I know people in the chat go, oh, Steve, good about... You've always complained about this. I'm not complaining. I think level designers are very, very talented. I suck at level design. But when I see someone post something that says, I made this in three days, and it's like an entire environment that they clearly didn't make, they just put together and set up the cinematics, it grinds my gears a little bit because I know the kind of comments they'll get. I, I just know. It's, oh, what? You did this in three days? Game developers have no excuse. Why do they take years making an environment? Well, it's because we have to make the environment. Credit the modeler if it's awesome models. Well, sometimes they get it for free, right? So, would you still credit it? Like, if you got it all from Mega Scans, I think you should write Mega Scans assets. Assets. But is that common? Do, should you write that? Do people think that's. Oh, you load up my accent. Do people think that's fair? That you should have to write you got it all from mega scan i think you should because you should want to demonstrate the parts you did if i made an entire scene but all i did was level design and camera work i would want to tell people that's all i did because that's what i want people to review of that work 
You know what I mean? Like, if I put it on my art station, I don't want people to get the misconception that I did all the art, because if they bring me in to, for an interview, I'll just have to say to them, no, I didn't make the art. Sorry, I'm not here to be a 3D artist. I'm here to be a level designer. Let's read. For me, it doesn't bother me if others do it, but I would never do it myself because I say I made this, I want it to be true, modeling inclusive. Level design is frustrating for me, but with artists, I don't mind it as much because many people work on a single environment in our work and it's never one person environment otherwise. Yeah, but they all put the content in right. And I, I feel like if 20 of you worked on one environment, you'd say, like, I made this with a team, right? Or would you say, oh, I made this, even though it was like 20 people's work? Maybe I'm the weird one here. I mean, it's like Tommen said a while ago. He said they, they've had to just not throw people out of the interview, but have to decline people the job at the company because they'll come in and they have the expectation that they could do 3D art. Then when they ask them, oh, you know, what software do you use all this? They have no actual experience being a 3D artist because they've not made into 3D art. Even though they've got environments on their art station, that art station says they're a 3D artist, they haven't made into 3D art. So they've had to say to them, oh, sorry, you know, we didn't realize that's all you've done. We didn't realize all you did was the level design. We were bringing you in for an interview because we thought you was a 3D artist, like a 3D modeler. So I think it, it shoots people in the foot anyway. You shoot yourself in the foot by not being more clear because you can get scenarios like that where you've wasted your time to go to an interview because of misinformation. I do think people are somehow obligated to mention they didn't create the assets. That is somewhat uh, else's work that will automatically must be admired so they should be credited in some way mm -hmm. again though i could just be the the weird guy here with this opinion most people might say no steve you're wrong why would i have to write oh it's mega scan this i just want to show off some work i did it feels pedantic to have to, to for you to complain that i should be writing down every credited thing i used so i i, I might just be the, the you know um the weird one out here and I, i'm fine with that i'm not i'm not saying i'm correct at all i'm just curious what you guys think i think like this would be way better again when i have my streams i like to have conversations and stuff with chat so it's a part of that what is this what is this why why has it somehow become detached how did i do that By the way, Steve, will you put Flying Boat on Patreon? Maybe. Uh, if I finish it, I'll put it up for you guys to... Do you want... It's, it really depends. I, I might put it up as you can have the entire scene, or I might maybe just do a £5 Patreon thing where you guys could just have it to fly around but not have the assets. I know you probably want it to actually have the assets, but I haven't decided yet. I've been so busy lately that it's really hard to actually get the time to think about that kind of stuff. If I can model something, but I use to make a scan, I won't bother to say I didn't make it, but that's because I can upon request anyway. Okay. Well, it's the same with uh, photogrammetry. I know that if me or any uh, others put photogrammetry on a portfolio, that would say, yeah, that's a really good point. And to be fair, all my friends who's ever done photogrammetry will say that they've done photogrammetry. I know some other people won't. They'll just say I made this and they just took pictures of something. And don't get me wrong. There's a skill to photogrammetry. I know this um i know it's not as high skill gap as just making the asset i want to study you before scene lighting i can buy it if you put on gumroad okay okay maybe i will then a big difference between saving time and pretending you're more skilled than you are hmm. to start my project for the next months could please leave from scratch there is something incredibly fascinating to making a, uh, a new scene with nothing in it and creating the first object and scripts oh yes awesome I love uh, it's such a scary thing though right starting a completely new environment don't you think like when you've got nothing it's really hard especially scale scale is a really big one because you'll make a scene and then you'll throw in a, a, a character in and you'll go oh my god he's huge or, oh my god he's tiny then you'll move him around certain other objects like this object's so small compared to the rest of the scene but it looks fine from this camera and it can be very stressful but that's kind of the fun of it oh yeah uh photographs can be a paying can't it yeah i've never done it before i've just seen a lot of people do it and a lot of my friends got into it and i know it can be really annoying especially when you come back and you don't quite have all the images you need 
and because i've seen people they'll scan it and then they've got some areas that didn't get enough enough detail on it because they didn't quite get all the camera angles they needed or they've taken the pictures in a different uh lighting condition like because it's always best to take your pictures in overcast so that way your engine can generate your lighting because an overcast lighting is very ambient i assume people know that i'm sort of just preaching to the choir here but um whereas if you get some directional lighting in it you'll have a baked in directional light on your objects so it's kind of one purpose you can fix it but it becomes very awkward and a lot more tedious but like if you put together a mega sense scene like a forest for example then hopefully you won't say i made the whole thing in in x days exactly right i my the, my main concern with it is i think it puts down artists i'll read what you said as well if you upload the results to the art station professionals can tell it's been scanning your light that's very really true as well um well, in most cases, I'd like to think. I know some people who'd get tricked by it. The photograph serve and you get some funny looks from the public seeing you take a thousand pictures of a tree stump with gear on. Yeah, sounds pretty funny to be fair. But yeah, my, my main issue with people doing this on their art stations or people doing it on YouTube and then writing on it, this took me three days, is what I said at the start, that it can really, really put a lot of hate towards art developers towards people who make who spent three months making a cool building for an environment and then people go oh what this guy made this in three days why did it take you so long i know that the contact isn't usually that direct but reading around i can only imagine it gets stressful some people were seeing everyone basically indirectly tell them they're too slow because someone's lying about making their scene it causes this like disillusion that's a good word um between customer or consumers and developers stop i keep dragging parts out by accident wait so i didn't wait what i broke this part as well oh that was the part that was broken okay i know people get very annoyed at me when i talk about this and they're like you're just overthinking it but i do think it causes issues I played around a bit with photogrammetry and it was quite funny. I, uh, I did get some muscles from squatting. Oh, right. In 360 degrees around the tree stump in three different heights. Getting those leg muscles up. That's, see, you can skip leg day if you do photogrammetry. I do think the funniest thing that happens to me when i talk about this kind of stuff is i've gone to people's videos before who have said oh it's taking me three days by the blah 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 oh what is oh wait it's got selected that's fine um and I'll, I'll ask just ask i'm not being malicious i'm just asking oh so what was made in three days i'm curious i want to know what part of that work was produced in three days because it's a good way to uh, gauge like sort of how fast people do things i always always not from the content creator but from their fans get so much hate for just asking that simple question they're like telling me i'm being disrespectful and you know blah 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 and they're like they're always like oh bet you can't do better and i'm like well if he didn't make the assets i don't need to prove that i did better i <laughs> I, I, don't, I don't know what to tell you <laughs> i think this maybe should be here then i move all these around I know it's very tedious if I just had uh, some of those UV tools. I probably wouldn't have to do any of this. So some of you are probably looking at me like, oh, Steve, <laughs> stop saving your money and just make it easier for yourself. I mean, the results of uh, scans are very satisfying because of the realistic textures that gets put on them. Oh, hell yeah. It made me play around a bit with projection paint. I think one of the big things about... Um, it's going to be a little bit of a side right now. Uh, one of the big things about photogrammetry is people who think an entire game can be made of it and and they don't understand why people may avoid using photogrammetry. And a big, a big reason to avoid photogrammetry if you're developing an entire game that you know... Oh, wait. Is there a level designer as well if you make a forest scene with makes sense and you make the road, for example, yourself model it? I mean, that comes a bit into environment eyes. Every time I look up the definition of environment eyes versus a level designer, a level designer is someone who puts all the environment eyes stuff into a scene, whereas an environment eyes will make all those things. That's usually the definition I find. I would still probably say you're a level designer if only 5% of the work in the scene is being modeled. Um, but I guess that's just up to sort of interpretation if, if you can prove you can make models it, it's a little bit more like yeah look i am an environment artist but this scene is just more of an example of me being a level designer because being both is always helpful 
If you can put a scene together using the assets you make, that's always going to look very good. Hmm, we've still got, like, gaps, though. I think what I'll do... This, probably these pictures should be actually um, separate textures, but for now, we're just I'm just going to make them bigger and plant them around. Oh, my God. Those bits. Uh, if I put these bits into a square, I've started sort of thinking that because I, I like to keep level density, uh, texture density on everything the same. But recently, I've kind of just uh, thought to myself, well, it's better to still use up the space, even if one part of the object might look a bit more detailed. That's not going to be a negative thing. So I kind of don't mind these days getting things up. That's probably good enough. That's compared to what it automatically generated. That's not bad. Level design and just white box it all, man. I don't know. Whenever I look up the definition, they always say level design is the ones that put in all the stuff. Like if you look, level designer versus... It might have changed now, to be honest. I looked at this up a while ago. Let's see what it says right at the top. I'm not someone who builds the assets that go into the environment they model. Often texture and subtitles light their environment. Level designers are responsible for taking the assets that environment artists have created and assembling them into an environment that can that we can all play in. So I don't know. That every time I've looked it up, it says that the level designer will take existing made assets and build the environment, but the environment artist himself won't actually put the environment together. So I don't know. I'm, I'm just going off of online uh, definitions. At my company, I do it all. So. I think in the last decade, people have extended over to doing more jobs. Because I remember when my uh, teachers used to talk about it. They'd be like, oh, yeah, you'll have a vehicle artist, a prop artist, or an environmental prop artist, a weapon artist, a level designer, a lighting artist, a texture artist in some cases. So you wouldn't even have to texture your own assets. Um, and then they used to say yeah, all you had to do was 3D model. Sometimes all you had to do was sculpt, and then other people would deal with it. Today, I never see that. If you're going to make an asset, you make it from start to finish, and then you usually also get it in engine. Yes, yeah, uh, what Adam said, it's probably also very different per company. So I don't know. I don't think, because of how vast the job is, and how different it can be in different locations, different companies, it, it really changes definition no matter where you are. That's why I like to go on internet definition. Because by definition, I'm a lead artist, but I do, like, the job of nine different artists. Um, so in my case, I would say a lead artist does all of this. Where in other companies, they might say, all oh, a lead artist does is his standard job, which he originally got hired by the company to do, so an environment artist, plus he leads the team. So it could be really different no matter where you go. But you make a scene with mega scans, which are scan models, so you didn't model them. It's not environment art, it's level design. Because you put into... Uh, together the already done yeah see that that's why a lot i think that's why a lot of places define that as a level designer because of examples like that with mega scan so if i put uh together a scene i model them then i am an environment artist and not just a modeler yeah i mean if you put together a scene and model everything i just say you're both right you're a level designer and uh environment artist you, you're just both jobs right because you can't say you're not a level Sorry, we'll be talking so much this stream already. Um, you can't really say you're not a level designer because you've literally put the scene together. The only way I could say maybe you're not is if they do what Adam said and they basically white box or whatever you want to call it. I've heard white box, gray box and uh, block out. So whatever you want to call it. If you've got someone who's blocked out the scene for you and all you're doing is replacing the blocked out assets with your assets, maybe then you can't consider yourself a level designer because all you're doing is replacing those spots with, uh, with assets you made. My time is environment I spent a large chunk of my work from, uh, from SE5, Sniper Elite 5, was weapon up. Man, well, because... I think the way I've always described environment artists as prop artists, and I don't know how true this is. Again, I've only had a job for a year for three months, and it's in, only in a very small company. But I've always said there's a the big difference between a prop artist and an environment artist is that you could be approached as an environment artist. Someone could say to you, oh, can you make this vehicle for the environment? 
and you're like, okay, yeah, and you're still classed as environmentalist, right? Or you're not classed as a prop artist, at least. Whereas if they approached a prop artist and said, can you make an environment for your tank or for your vehicle? They can just say no, because they're not an environmentalist. But an environmentalist kind of has to make the asset that a prop artist would make. So I feel like an environmentalist is an extension, or a prop artist is already an extension of an environmentalist. I only model the stuff I only model the stuff only but not put together in a scene so it will look nice then I'm just a modeler yeah essentially a prop modeler if you're just modeling loads of props you're just a prop modeler but yeah like like again reiterating on Adam said it changes per company so it's a very hard thing to define because it's changed in so many locations that's why I usually go to whatever the internet says even if what the internet says is against what happening what's happening in my company i just hope that that's more of a general definition of it or generalized definition of it anyways let's stop talking well i'd love talking you guys uh, i could keep talking but i'm gonna do work at the same time so we could start with the small props or we could go straight to because i've already done the fridge so maybe i should just go straight to the cooker I wonder if I can go Simpsons cooker or oven. You are a generalist in your company, right? Yeah, see, that's another word that people use a lot in companies. If you do multiple jobs, they just call you a generalist because you, you, you do the general work, I guess. But technically, yeah, I'm... The easiest way to define my job is a lead artist generalist artist or lead artist generalist or whatever because i cover so many different roles which i have to we've only got two 3d artists in my company so it's not like it's not like i have the choice i like doing it all though if someone says to me make some particle effects sure make some materials awesome make a take cool you know i'll just go do it I, if, if i'm capable of doing it i'll say yes if i'm not capable like if i'm approached hey gizro i'm pretty sorry right? gizro tv um, yeah, someone approaches me and says, make some concept art or make some graphics design art or make some UI art. I just say no, because it's not an area I am comfortable with and I'm not very good at it. And it's not technically even to do with the 3D aspects of my job. At Nintendo, hire this chat. I'm doing pretty good, QQ. We've had a lot of conversation in chat. I've talked about a lot of serious stuff, as I always do. Um, you can always go back and watch it some other time. Yeah, we've just been having a good time. What did I write? Simpsons Oven. This isn't coming up the Simpsons Oven at all. What, why is... What? <laughs> why is... Oh, why is there Nelson in his underwear? What is going on? This isn't an oven. I mean, I could kind of understand these ones. Okay, maybe we'll just get a generic oven up then and we'll use that and also use the color pattern or the colors of the oven in Simpsons. Anyways, overall, Adam, because I haven't seen you in so long, how have you been? I know you said you've got a lot of stuff going on, but how are you now? Hmm, so it's got one door on it. If I write one door oven... And it's got a hob on the top. It's got a little bit at the back. And it's, it was even got an extractor fan. Just above. Just a small one. I think that's an extractor fan. Either that or it's a light. Okay. As always, guys, get as much reference as you can. Reference is key for making pretty much anything. Can I, I just want to zoom into this picture. Save? Oh my god. It won't let me save it. Oh, there's a bigger picture here. Nice. So they've got this kind of like 3D one, which would be quite useful. Because I could get the generic shape of it. Hey, moderate. How's it going, man? 
Time to finish up that space slug. Nice. I remember you saying that's what you were doing next. All right, so let's come out here like I like to do. Make a mesh. Can you show me around when you're free of my Simpson scene or my old boat scene? Or because I've not done much more to the Simpson scene, but well, there's not a lot more added to what you've probably already seen. E. I'm good right now, mate. Everything's steady. Actually, so we see got a new car and PS5. Wag is pretty easy at the minute, as we are in an in-between period, so there's not too much to do. Okay. Oh, something else I've sort of done, Adam, is I've got really into reading comics and mangas. I wanted to do something that was away from computer screens. Um, when I got my job, I was like, this is a great time because money's coming in to try to invest in a hobby that gets me away from the computer screen so i start buying mangas and comics really cheap on facebook i only get them like pre-owned um but yeah i've really really enjoyed collecting them and i've i had the whole series of walking dead for example that was really fun really great series go on holiday in two weeks so pretty excited for that i need to finally go on holiday i've never been abroad i've never left the country i need i need a good holiday where i leave the country and i do some exciting things one day hopefully one day soon so i wonder if i should just make the back of the cooker like because i can make it like this and have it as one asset and bring this part up or should i do this first and then you got the like middle part here when this part comes up like here oh wait no i should do this first pull this part up and then just do like that let's get this back little curve uh or do i just make that a separate mesh which i think may be the better way to go mm, yeah i think that'd be the better way to go Uh, so instead, we'll just do this, do this, do this. Because the problem is, making it so it's one geometry causes a... Um, it's very destructive to this one. Because if I, if I have all these edge loops in here, and when I go to change something in here, I have to deal with all these edge loops. So if I have it as a separate mesh, it could still look fine, but it's just not as destructive as the other way. Again, it's like this. Perfect. Pull you out. Do a smooth one here. Like that. I'll show you around the scene in a minute. Moderate as well. Don't you worry. Make a bit thinner. Pull it in. Uh, previous go I was seeing. Really enjoyed the anime top type series couldn't really get into it personally i think anime is definitely a hit uh hit and miss hit and miss yeah no hit or miss god my mum says hit and miss which is incredible because you're not gonna hit and miss you're gonna hit or miss i i heard a set the other day and i was like that's what i get it from but um this he oh it's so hot right now yeah i think anime appeals to some people and really does appeal to others and i think you have to watch the right anime for certain people i think some people might really really like anime but have started from the wrong part of anime and completely lost interest because they think all anime is like that i don't know if that's the case with you adam uh whereas i watch very specific animes that i know i'm gonna enjoy i enjoy action and fantasy and stuff so i watch action and fantasy and stuff um so yeah i think it's i think it's definitely a an interesting topic but yeah the heat right now is insane have you seen how hot it's going to be on monday i assume so i assume everyone's seen so for those of you who don't know how hot england gets i know a lot of other places get this hot as well but a lot of people think england is just a very cold place that just rains and you know probably 10 months of the year that's just quite true maybe nine months of the year however on monday the temperature in maine so in the coastal area it's gonna be 29 degrees celsius which is 85 fahrenheit but in the mainland at the right time to look for cambridge it's going to be 40 it's going to be 40 degrees celsius or 104 degrees fahrenheit 
which is insane. I mean, Adam's probably going to be in the bath loads to call off. I think only watch anime is very interesting as well because I remember a friend being like, "All oh, series today sucks," and I was like, "Have you watched anything?" I went, "Yeah." I went, "Oh, have you watched this? No. Have you watched this? No. Have you watched this? No. Have you watched this? No." And he just said, "No, to think. And I was like, "So how do you know if everything sucks if all you've done is watch anime and nothing else?" So I think it works both ways, personally. Is that a clock on it? Oh, it is like a little dial thing. I can have that separate mesh, to be honest. Um, cursor to active. Oops. Cursor to active. There you go. Mm, we'll probably just use a circle. We'll make it 16. Bring it up. So like this. Bring it out. We're probably going to have... It's probably going to have... It's probably going to have a frame to it. A little bit in the middle. Probably going to come in. And it's probably going to do something like this. Come in and emerge center because it'll have a glass on top we smooth that so like that let me just sit that on here uh, not a problem with this is i also need the interior part because that's the glass on top uh so the best way to do that is probably to actually separate this part out as its own glass and then go back into here pull this part back fill that part or don't fill that part like this so we have the glass sit on top with this flat bit at the back pull it back a little bit i think cool and then let's read what you guys are writing uh i rather sit in a nice bath oh hell yeah it's like saying i don't like tv when the other program you ever watched was just shot yeah that's so true. Can I link the site where you can see the oven better? Sure, link it in chat though, because it doesn't ever work in YouTube. There's probably a way for me to enable it, but I can't figure it out. Do you read the chat? Oh no, did I miss something from Mustafa? Wait. Did I miss something? Or was that him earlier? Wait. Oh, I think I think I read it. I think I read it. I think. Sorry if I missed any of you guys' messages. It's quite quite um quite a lot today. I love reading you guys talking to me, but sometimes I will skip over things. I'm sorry for that. Uh, da -da -da. Yeah, you can link that in, ch in my Discord chat if you want. Blah, blah, blah. We go in there to make sure. You just have to remember. I don't think I have links in YouTube. Can you just not do it in general? That's like something you just can't do. That's kind of sad. Why did I do this? I did it so I could just. I should have just spawned in a thingy. <laughs> what a convoluted way to make a. I just wanted to make look. That. <laughs> Right, so it's like a dial. So we put this here, put this here, then it's just basically got a point here like this, and then it comes to a point. Um, so if I just, oh, this is gonna work because it's smooth. We're not much set up, merge, last. E I mean, I probably should have added some more edge loops like that. And then maybe some more like this. Let's get a sharp a bit at the bottom. And then... That looks fine. Like, I could add more to make it sharper, but I think that looks fine. Because they're not usually completely sharp. And it's supposed to be kind of stylized, so I kind of want a slight smoothness of things. I can, as I have... My privileges. Oh, that's cool. Oh my god, that is spooky. Simpsons Kitchen. Hmm. 
Whoops. Let's pull you out slightly, grab you, and then do like this. And we have a much smoother result without that weirdness in the middle. If we hide this, we should have that little dial in the middle now. And then I'll texture around that some of the like little like black bits that go around the edges. Hey, let's go public chat noise. That's what I was waiting for. Alright, so this is what, yeah, moderate showed. Boom. Wait, so is this like a funny meeting background? Can I like download this? Oh, I see. Oh, that's very detailed. Thank you very much. Oh, it's got like those hobs on it. Right. Oh, I did the dial pretty ac Yeah, pretty accurate. The only difference I probably should have made was the dial looks like it's completely separated. Uh, so if I just redo that. Cursor to active. I think it was shift S, but I've just for some reason never got into the habit of doing it. I know I should be in the habit of doing it. But I've just never gone to the habit of doing it. Another tip for you, Adam. Try to get in the habit of doing every shortcut you can. I don't always do it, but it's definitely helpful. Oh, wait, I kind of just want to hide. They're not a way to permanently hide down. That's fine. Get it aligned. I guess I could x ray for a second. Yeah. Um. So it kind of just looks, this literally just looks like it's a smoothed, or maybe I should do a, uh, at least one edge loop like this. Then it kind of just looks like it's smoothed over like that, right? And then if I grab this, make it maybe a little bit thicker, pull it out a tad, then grab this, this, grab that, pull it into it, make it a little bit thinner, pull it up. And last this nice, it looks perfect. Uh, let's do both sides, grab it, pull it up, pull it in, get a nice point. Cool. I can delete the part that intersects at the bottom, which will give us a nice sharp bit coming into it, like that and it looks a little bit bulbous as it comes out like here let's do something like this cool and then do what i was doing earlier by putting a bevel around the edges like that and you can kind of hide six at the front but we've got that little dial uh, i kind of don't like how that's being smoothed it's probably just because it's a and gum so we'll fix that let me read chat because i've got it minimized right now because i've got all my monitors in use the only problem doing 3d is i will always have my monitors in use right because I, i'm working i have no idea what that person just said in my oh wait wrong chat sorry i'm looking at the lo-fi chat i was like what is that but yeah, I'm always using like my monitors. So it's obviously when you're playing a game, you're just using one monitor, then you can have your stream on another monitor. Whereas I have the unfortunate um, issue of when I need to use multiple monitors, I then can't see you guys anymore. Does that work with a grid fill? Yeah, but grid fill will, if I think. Yeah, oh, of course. Hmm. See, this is like something that was always a debatable thing in my. Uh, in my uni where was it better to do something like this or was it better to do like the cap where you just merge it on the middle because my teachers could never decide oh it's got some that's like messed up now so it'd be like this my teachers could never decide wait there's actually an option over here so you already know more than me wait is that one of these See bottom left. You can change rotation levels of the grid field. Oh, what well, when I sorry when I do the grid field. Mm. There's actually a shortcut for it. I know there is. Yeah. Oh, it's the control F one, right? Yeah. There you go. Oh, that's very cool. 
I kind of liked it like that though, because it gave me like a nice uh, bit of geometry in the middle. Uh, let's show moderate around if he's still here. So moderate, this is this is very laggy on stream for some reason, despite my other scene being fine. Because I keep blaming it on UE5, but yeah, that light space as well. But yeah, here you go. So if you've seen it. Please don't be too laggy for you guys. If I if you've seen it prior, this will look very familiar. That's so laggy. Yeah, I've got it. Have I got it? Fifty percent, forty-five percent, and then basically I've just been adding more assets to it. So I've got like these guys over here. They wouldn't be causing this effect if I have my thing set to one hundred percent. I don't know if you can see the effect, but got some books down here now got like some close-up detailing of sort of wet cans condensation um and i think that's mo and then we're obviously trying to get all this in i'll try to block out all of this for now just to get it to get the shape all correct oh god it's so laggy let me just do this instead get the shape all correct over here and I've opened this part up so you can come into here now and go through the entire house. I need to still do upstairs, but we're getting there, we're getting there. Hey, mega cool man. Oh, and we've got Bart Skateboard in the corner. <sighs> okay. Wait to blend there. It's fine. I kind of want to make that more bulbous, but I'm not sure. Let's pull it out. Just a little more. Oh, wow. But that would work if that didn't pull it in a rude way. We should just do that. Yeah. Then slightly do that. It's nice. Because I just want that glass and look at, like, at some smudge or grime on it. I think it would look quite nice. So it's got so it's quite wide in this image, and at the front, it's like this, and then it yeah, it doesn't fully sit at the bottom. It's like let's raise it a little bit and make a separate mesh for it. It's like this, this, and then delete that face I just made here because I don't need decks into sex. Um, yeah pretty much then we've got the door that's like in the middle here so i could do this two different ways i could just do edge loops like this like that get it i could do a boolean or i could just do this we've got some selects on and then get that shape it's definitely wider in this example so let's follow following this example we'll make it oh not that part all of this will make it a little bit what even is that make it a little bit wider yeah just just a little bit like this yeah that's good cool now we've got this nice wide door that it looks like on there uh i probably just want to pull that in and we could do an interior if we really want Ooh. There we go. like this and again the benefits of having these interiors wide oven it is a wide oven like it's so wide. <laughs> yeah, benefits to doing like interiors and stuff is like if I do want to do some funny things in the environment, like oh, let's put a something that blocks the Homer in there, or let's put a pig in there. The reason I say pig is because Huh? <gasps> Bart, no! What? Sorry, force of habit. Lisa, no! <laughs> now this is the best part. <laughs> My stream is not up there. It's just a little dirty. It's still, still good. good. It's still, still good. It's just a little slimy. It's still, it's 
just a little airborne. It's still good. It's still good. It's gone. I know. You ask me this, I oh, think I'll it's donate a million dollars to the local orphanage. When pigs fly. When pigs fly. Will you be donating that million dollars now, sir? No, I'd still prefer not. Yeah. <laughs> it's just a little slimy. It's still good. It's still good. Oh, actually, then it comes to that. Because I was thinking maybe... Has the oven door got a cab on it? It does. So it definitely needs to do something. Oh. Oh, it does select that. Okay, let's not select that. Let's just do this. Ooh, I just probably need this then. Probably don't need the interior either. Ooh, whoops, I pushed the V. That's one cool tool on Blender, and I, I'm pretty sure every other modding software has it, but if you just have two faces and you want to separate it, or wherever you're clicking, like edges, you can just separate it by pushing V. That's nice. That's nice, dear. Mm, I think that might be a bit too much, actually. Looking at the actual image, probably just something like this. Very small. Small, small curve. Okay. Ignore me itching my nose. I know, I know. I'm glad you guys are around because... Well, because I like you guys being here. But also because... Um, you guys help me with a lot. Like reminding me of tools, telling me how to do things. It's just super helpful. Okay, so I probably just should bridge this. This is too working. There you go. It's super, super helpful. Like, And that's one of the reasons I stream. I stream because I want to help you guys. But also stream so you guys can help me. Uh <laughs> But I think that's I think that's a pretty fair trade if you ask me. Do that, cool. And I kind of want it slightly protruding, like very very slightly, and then we can have a nice bevel around the edge. Just like that. I think that looks quite nice. Then we need to ooh hoo hoo hoo. Not nice because I've got these two sharp together. It causes a issue. So we can only do it to about there. Hey IBM machine, how's it going, man? It's not like when you're just meeting an old friend and you forget their name. Hey you It's not what I meant. It's not what I meant for it to sound like. I swear. So if I just slightly make it bigger like that instead and then pull it in, we can rectify that uh, issue. Cool. Now once again, do this, pull this in. It's actually, it's like that. Actually, it's like this, slightly lower and slightly lower here, and then that's your glass. Glass. Um, but because it's glass, I need to actually have the whole thing coming in. So we do that, do this, align it with that, delete that, and then I just need to basically... I wonder if the quicker way to do this... I know this is... Oh, I'm not even selecting the whole thing. Whoops. Select the whole thing to uh, shoot it in. Lastly... Last year I get PC, but I can download Unreal Engine because the internet's so bad in my country. Ah, oh, that sucks. Hopefully you can get it eventually downloaded. It always makes me sad. Like, the idea that people can't do the hobby they love and enjoy because of limitations like that sucks, man. Uh, separate this. I don't know if this is the best way to do it, but for some reason in my head, just doing a quick mirror on it to rectify the uh, the in, rectify the issue of just basically needing it to essentially be mirrored. So like that.
So I've made a huge oven door, which is definitely too much. Let's <laughs> let's fix that first. Oh, I've got this face here that I left in my exit. Uh grab all those and pull them forward and we'll have a much thinner and more realistic door frame now there usually is like rubber bits on this or at the very least a, like a bit like here possibly further in like this or possibly even like this like this like this like this like this and it's where the door would sit when it pushes up against it so it doesn't like oh how aligned was that oh a little bit off make it a little bit thinner then Something like there oh but i wanted to push through a pushrood 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 there you go a little bit <laughs> like that okay okay i think the door's a little too thick i think i need to grab that in a little bit which is pretty easy we just need this this give it more of a gap i think i need a little bit more of a gap here so we'll do that and then we'll raise it a tad so we've got bigger gap here smaller gap here nice i need glass in there so i basically just need sort of this face pull that back to it just fits in there i can make it two set of glass like that mm, probably the better idea to be honest and i'm just gonna do a solid fill so that way we've got that on both sides now i might be able to do a bevel here i can but it's being a bit harsh enough what it would i just wanted to bevel oh there you go that in a bit there there you go sweet nice that's the door that should be way longer than it should have been i feel like it did anyway grab this bar i think i've got it too oh, do i like it's it's from an angle but i think it is quite deep it could always be changed later i make sure work a lot safe ah thanks ma'am you just like hearing me like <laughs> yammer on about nonsense <laughs> I will say that I think if I didn't have you guys around when I was originally trying to get like a job that I would have already quit doing this. I would have given up ages ago. But having you guys around has really helped me focus and really helped me get the drive to do 3D. And I'm very thankful for that. Thankful for that. You guys have really helped me um, get to where I am today. It's fun to do, even if you do it only sometimes. Yeah. This, it, yeah, yeah. I can only ever show you personal projects because work stuff I can I can't share on stream. This is just a Simpsons scene. I'm just making the oven. I'm doing like the kitchen assets now. Uh, I haven't put the fridge in yet, but the fridge is UV mapped. I love how big I make the model before shrinking it down. Look, it looks like freaking a huge oven that's double the size of the house. Um, oh, bugger, I right clicked by accident. So I got the fridge in, but I haven't got it in the actual engine yet. And now, a word from our sponsors, Rage Shadow Legends. Almost done with my texture set prep. prep. Nice. You know, texture sets, because um, you've got UDIMs, right? Is that what they're called? UDIM. Versus texture set they basically do the same thing because i remember when someone was trying to tell me like you, they were like saying udims are like magic and what udims are from what i remember are basically in your uv square so it's easy to see in maya but basically you've got 
your other UV squares over here, and then another one here, then another one here, whatever in each square, and you got like one down here. So you basically just assign your UV map to each of those. So if you've got it in here in this grid in this grid over here, you would then be like zero one, zero two, zero three. And then if you've got one here, it'd be like one one, one two. And that's basically what UV sets do, right? Because in the UV set you're just creating a whole new UV area for you to then place in your uh UVs for psych else. But when someone first described UDIMS to me, I was just so confused because they didn't... I don't know. They explained it in like a magical way. Like it's just an awesome thing. In this scene, should be need bake for some price or or not? Uh, no, I don't think I'll be baking because it's. It, I'm going to be using Lumen. So UE5 Lumen to just get all the uh, lighting done. But do they export within tech separate texture files or in one? See, I don't know about that. I've never used UDIMs, so I can't really say much about them. I just never felt the need to use them. I mean, when I hear about what they use for, like they were like, oh, they were used for um, what is that? Do you see that? They were used for Godzilla in the Godzilla movie. I'm like, it's a very different thing. <laughs> it's also cartoony, so not a lot of subs detail. Yeah. My boss is trying to get that impression off to artists at the moment that he wants um he wants lack of well not lack of detail but not extra detailing on things because it kind of like when making so i want to show an example because it's hard to uh, it's always easier to explain stuff here as a 3d artist uh, physically than um in in words even though i speak a lot uh so let's see if we can start like this. We've got this, and that's our one of our posts for our fence. We've got the other part of the fence here. Uh, and then actually this will sit in front like this. So like this. So and then we can do like a bevel on it if we want. So kind of like a fence. I know it's a very, very basic looking fence, but yeah, right? Oh wow, that didn't actually. There we go. Now you could obviously add more detailing in and do like these curved bits. Oh, a bit, bit too much. Bit, also a bit too much. So when it comes to like stylized, you want all of these sorts. You want more of the shape to be over exaggerated right so you could probably still get away with this being if you textured it correctly being like realistic looking or whatever but then when you're really going for stylized and this is what my boss is trying to sort of demonstrate at the moment at my company because he's a, a veteran artist is you'll do stuff more like yeah, more like this get fatter at the top Then you have more sort of bulbous shapes going on. Okay, that might be a bit too much, but you know what I'm trying to get at. Like, you just really over exaggerate everything. And that's what we boss wants right now, because we're realistic, you could put in like nails and stuff and whatnot but with cartoony it's all about those big shapes um that my boss is trying to tell people to do that was a terrible example but i think it i think it illustrated my point enough I think, I, I wonder how discouraging it is when, so when we get new artists coming, I always tell them, because they're like, oh, you're the lead, all this, you must be really good, and everything, and I always tell them that, no, I'm not very good, I was like, I just know how to do a lot of stuff, and I always tell them that they're really good, like, we had a concept artist coming, and she's been there for like three months, she's amazing, she could just think up ideas in her head, and then get them down in 3D, or get them down on paper, and that's so cool. Um, and I, I'd say to her, you're an amazing artist. And she's like, oh, you are too. And I'm like, and it's nice of her. But I can't do any of that stuff. And I I just 
you know, I wonder if I discourage people by saying, like, nah, I'm not that good. I think you're really good. You, you're you able to do a lot of stuff I can't do. And maybe I should just go, oh, thanks. Yeah, I am a good artist. As a particular talent. Yeah, it's true. Everyone does have their specific talents. I mean, I've always wished I was very good at drawing and stuff. It's it's always been something I... Like, if you if you gave me the option and went, Oh, Steve, I'll take away all everything you know about 3D, but you'll be very good at drawing. I'll probably take it. I love... I would love being able to draw, like, very, very well. And I've practiced for a long time, and I've never been able to really uh, find much progress in doing it but when i started doing 3d i felt like i was improving very quickly compared to it so i stuck with 3d because i thought it was a better use of my time but i love i'd love to be able to draw and i'd love to be able to come up with ideas in my head that is what makes a good team yeah yeah it's true My boss always gets me to come up with ideas, and I just... I always get an idea, and then we... People help flesh it out. That is a thin bar to grab. Jesus, it's uh, thicken that up a tad. Well, that looks like it's center, so probably here. But the bar, well, I mean, I'd say the bar shouldn't be thicker than the cap, but the cap is definitely smaller than the bar, so. Pick a, a little bit too thick. Yeah, just a tad thinner. Nice. Cool. Uh, it's got a towel wrapped around it. We can do that. I think, first of all, I need to make it come out a little bit more than I've got it. Hey, that tech guy, how's it going, man? Not seeing you for, I want to say two weeks, but maybe you were here last week. I can't fully remember. I think I was here last week. Okay, maybe you were. Maybe I'm the bad person. I've forgotten. Wait, why is making it cloth? Make it... Oh, I'm clearly not... Wait, how do I get the timeline up again? Timeline, timeline, timeline. Uh, animation. Yeah, okay, I'm clearly not the start of the timeline. Well, there's a standard layout. There you go. uh so this looks like a really long towel like if you were it might be because it's folded but if you were to stretch that out in the way it looks right now it'd be like this long and then this thin <laughs> time goes different f uh for me oh my god are oh, you a time traveler that'd be cool let me just have like this then we're gonna subdivide it 10 times here five times here and then actually subdivide it at least once with curved edges yeah curved edges uh, do a scale there you go so apply to that now we want to do a cloth because i'm going to subdivide it one more time after the cloth physics i think i don't mind having it high detailed again it is usually five so we're not too limited okay so first of all i need to pull that back a little bit at the start Wait, what the i broke it what oh i undone the cloth Okay, first of all, we need to put on self collision. Uh, collision, self collision, cool. There we go. Cool. I need to make the back. I need to make it thinner, definitely. So thinner. Play a bit 
here. Pull it this way, go again. Oh my god, how am I so bad at this? Okay, I don't mind about being a little longer. Actually, from the image, it's technically the other way around. Can you make it folded or add a sort of Yeah, I'll add one afterwards, I think. I think that'd be the best way to do it. Uh, so I kind of want another subdivide, actually. Cool. There's something I could do, but I can't remember what to do it. Instead, I'm just gonna slightly alter the shape to get some wrinkles in it. Like this. And that should. Wow. It's even okay. What I should actually do that, I just realized it's slightly shift it. Yeah, not too bad. Maybe it's still do what I said. Or maybe, uh... <sighs> there is a random select I found. Random... So, nope. Oh, that's not random wrong. Random... Select random. Here we go. I discovered this the other day. I was like, oh, nice. We do that so we get this randomness to it. If we do another... Select random... Oh. Look random, I then pull that down and we get like this sort of randomized geometry, which is nice. Which should help cause a couple of creases. Smooth it over. No, straight. Ooh, if I try one more subdivide. Pretty good. Cool. Apply, apply. If you start to one more time, you'll get those creases, like get a little bit more detail, but I think that's probably fine. Actually, it's not as high poly as I thought it would be. Uh, if we then do a solidify, and pull that thickness in a little bit like that. There you go. We've got a kind of, or well, not sure what's happening there. For some reason, this part on it looks a little thinner. Oh, it does like something like this. Just change that a little bit just to give it some shape. Cool. Then if we go into sculpts, it looks thicker in the picture. It does, but I don't know if I want it that thick because we need to still look at some sort of realism here. Some realism, not a lot. God. Yeah, this makes it look bumpy doing that. I mean, I guess that looks fine for now. Yeah, got some creases down there and stuff. It looks fine. I kind of want to smooth it here. It's annoying me. Right here. I know it's like losing some of that detail, but. Yeah, I think that looks a bit better. Okay, so the hobs. 
I don't know. Let's do this. Let's do the bits here. They look very weird. So we'll do these parts first. So as always, I like using a cube. And it, they just look like bubbles. I think maybe we'll make the back of them flat like this. That was smooth because again we can we have the luxury of making it as detailed as possible. Um then I just need a cube on it, right? If I just copy this part, do this, do that is not local at all. How dare you? It would help if it did invert it. Kind of looks like that, to be honest. Do this. Maybe sharpen up the bottom like this. Yeah, that's definitely close to what I'm looking for. Pull this along. No, I should do that. Pull this. I, I definitely think I need like this. Make him a bit thinner. No, not that, not that. That's fine. That kind of looks like what they look like. <laughs> it's hard to tell. Again, it's a 2D image. Uh, so we're, we're kind of just winging it, obviously. There's apparently two on this side and then two on this side. Now, if we want it to be a bit more sim uh, sim symmetrical, that's not what I would look for. We want it to have some symmetry to it. Uh, if we do origin to cursor. Nope. Wait, where's my... I think he's got... Cursor to origin. So let's cursor. Cursor to online, cursor to grid, cursor to selected. Here we go. Nice. And then if we go. So this is cursor. So I want to go origin to pretty cursor. There you go. So now when I mirror it, it'll do it around its cursor. Perfect. I think I need to bring these in. Oh, I think I need to make them a tiny bit smaller. That's what, and then pull them in. I think I'll make you a tiny bit thicker. And make sure it covers all of it. Cool. Now, we could put detailing on here, but I don't know if I want to. Oh, there's some dials back here too. Hold on a minute. Uh, I guess I'll click apply to the mirror. Grab two of these. Oh, I guess grab two of these with this. Okay. Try to make it as straight as possible. It's not particularly straight, but it's good enough. And 
then there's a second one. Yeah. Cool. Now the hob is definitely an interesting one. It's just clawed, right? Uh, which I probably should just use a... Uh... So, one, two, three. One, two, three. So if it's got two gaps in the middle, that's eight. And one gap at each end, that's... 12. So if we get a circle of 12 on it, I bet I can replicate that pretty easily. Oh, first of all, when you spawn it in, <laughs> make sure you set it to what you just said out loud. Um, so we go corner, 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 pull these up, come out a little bit, and then come around. Origin point, let's get all that down. Get all that down. Grab all this. Get along the normals. And they grab these, delete these for some reason. Okay. Pull you down, pull you in. Bridge those. Kind of what they look like. Maybe what I should have done was just use a uh, thickness modifier. But that's not far off, right? Okay. For a just sorry, my just gone through. Mm -hmm. Do like two on that. Let's move that. Bring this down. Yeah, that's pretty close. I'm pretty happy with that. Mm, I think. What we're doing is this, grab this, grab this, grab this, grab this, pull this down. Grab this, oops, grab this, grab this, grab this, grab this, oops, this. Pull you down. There we go. We pull you in the tad as well. And the way I think I need to pinch the tops too. I need to sneeze. That's what I need to do. I can feel it coming. <coughs> Excuse me. Hmm. I think a tiny bit raised. Give it more of a cab. Okay, that's pretty good. Now it's actually the hot bit in the middle we got to worry about. So if we get that there, if we mirror, oh, actually, what I should have done was do this. There you go. Now, if we mirror, I mean, that's good too, but not quite what I wanted, but there you go. Um, I mean, they're quite small in the image, but I'm going to make them big to actually cover a bit more room. Oh, I don't know. Let's get down just a tiny bit. You just set the pan on these pointy bits, I guess. Now, do I want extra detailing on here? Like, do I want to separate out these areas? Look at that one down. I know it's not what it looks like in the image, but do we want to do that to preserve a little bit of realism? Not sure. So, because we've already got this mirrored, what I can do. So, if I look at a, look at a hob. Ah, see, they sometimes have that on it too. I mean, I'm going to assume it's the gas one they're using. So, we go gas hob. So, it's usually. So yeah, so you get like the protrusion protrusion from the bottom do this do this center nope right center there you go select this invert it oh i'm not 
above the ground when you get so these need to be actually flowing above the ground a little bit right because then you'll have like a um you'd have like freaking freaking let's just do that you'd have like a bit on them that keeps them attached which i think i will do i think that'll look good if we do that pull that down if we delete the face we'll have something more like that which i think i prefer i think you're excused thank you what i'm actually gonna do is spend actually in each of these to get a bit of a smoother transition as it comes up we're then gonna get our main hob bit here it's usually just a flat bit like this in the middle then there's usually a bit underneath. So that's the part that gets hot. Hot. There's usually a bit underneath. That's thinner. Thinner. And then here, we come down, we come out. Like that. Uh, we, del we do well. Because this is the part that needs holes in it. Because this is the part where... Is it equal sides? It is nice. It's where the flame comes out, right? So we do that and then... I think it's just delete it. Mm, that doesn't look too bad, actually. Top like this, so no extrusion here. Like that we have that like hob bit you get. Yeah, I was thinking lots of really small holes, but I, again, I'm I'm thinking of the over exaggeration nature of it being still the Simpsons. So I'm thinking I'm thinking big holes are the way to go. Maybe I'll change my mind later. Maybe like that. That looks good. That looks like a hob. And then that usually sits on some sort of surface. That's basically the whole thing underneath it. That usually comes up from the actual thing, but instead we're just going to make it part of this. We'll grab this part, pull you down, make you big. Let's isolate you and you so I can see it. There you go. That usually connects to the bottom like this, and it uses its flares out down here, so we can delete these fla faces, faces like this, and then just pull you out, and that makes it look like it has a surface it's sitting on. Let's delete the edge loops here. Cool. Pull you in a tad. Pull you in a tad. And then yeah, we want we do still want a bevel one here. So we get that sharp bit here. So it's like this it's very over exaggerated, but I think that's what we want. But I think because it's better for this, yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Definitely definitely a direction to go. <laughs> now I think these are too tall now. I don't know if I should just do that. And it gets a pinch on here. And maybe we can fix that afterwards. Wait, hold on a minute. Oh, whoops. I missed clicks on there, clearly. There you go. It's glowing like this. I think you need to make it a little bit smaller. Yeah, it's not too bad. Yeah, just what I was thinking. Too tall, yeah. Now, I don't know if I want to do this. Ooh, that's not bad, you know. You could always do bevel on the whole thing and see what it looks like. We bevel it before the subdivide. Hmm. 
Definitely not. I think that looks better like that. It might not look as accurate, but I think it looks better if we're thinking of it for a more realistic standpoint. Where did it go? <laughs> I clicked it and then isolated it and it was like, nope, not isolating anything. Yeah, I like that more. Now we can, oops, only this part. We can still change the scale of this, but I think that's probably fine. Move to the origin of the surface of this slope so you can resize, so you can size down. Oh, what, like move it into the center point like that? I don't like the sharpness here. Right here. I don't know if I want it to come in more. But if we do that, we select this as well. And basically it slides all of this. You know what I mean? Like bring that in more so it's not as out. Or maybe let's just add another one here to make it bulge out a little bit. Mm, that does look a little better. Same in here. Nah, it doesn't look better in there. Don't forget to save your work. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. I always sit myself, kick myself when I have a crash. You're so right, I just save. It's looking good so far. Ah, we've got like other objects that would be put on here like little pepper and salt pots and stuff uh, which we can add to the actual mesh and have it sit on the mesh and have it just as a different material element that's fine uh i mean if we're looking at a salt pot it just comes up like this it usually has just delete that mm, you know what actually no that's fine it's fine what i'll do so i'll subdivide it twice scale it out so yes, that's subdivide and subdivide it again and grab the edges I want. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Scale them inwards. Mm, not quite what I was looking for, actually. Uh, what about what if I did this? Not what I'm looking for. They kind of do that, but not definitely not in this way. Maybe I'm doing it too much, but this be way more subtle. Like this. But that makes it just like a flat surface now, so that's not doing anything good. Oh well, I'll decide how I want to do this later. But yeah, I can pop those in. Uh, then we've got the top of the oven, which is literally, by the looks of it, like this. It's definitely thinner than the rest. Like, it doesn't cover the whole of the oven, so it's more like that. The top comes in more. The whole thing's slimmer, comes back a little bit. And then it's literally just that. <laughs> Like, it's not anything really special. And then it's got some switches on it, which I guess is a little bit more special. Uh, so what does a switch look like? A switch is basically just... Right? Because you push that top part down and then it like rotates. Oh, I can't do that. It rotates. Oh, well, not quite. <laughs> it's something like that. And then that goes into here like this. Yeah, definitely way too much. Definitely much more subtle. Those switches are actually huge compared to uh, anything else, so that would have to be pulled down like this, and then I could just grab the backs, screw those out, bring those in the 
level or local. That's still not doing it, so I'll just drag it manually. Draw those out, pull them up, they'll have that little back to them. It's not aligned. How the hell did I do that? What? Oh, was it when I was moving them? Did I really do that bad of a job moving it? I wanted to duplicate it. Pull that out. Pull it across. Pull it down. Put it in the right spot. Do you know about add increases so that you don't have to add more geometry? Oh, creases. Yeah, 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 I do. But I never got into doing creases. They always confuse me. I don't know what's going on here. Why is it, like, so weird? What the heck? Is it the... Oh, it's the bevel. Interesting. Oh, that's still doing it. What? And that really weird line effect. Okay, whatever. Oh yeah, bevel breaks it entirely. Let's just do my own bevel then. Cool. Looking pretty good. This towel needs to be way bigger than I made it. If I just do that. Do like a little thingy. It can kind of make this cre creases look a bit more accurate. So it's fine. Not accurate, but more pinched, which is fine. Cool. That's looking pretty good. That's pretty much all modeled, right? I could do other bits too if I really wanted to, but that's pretty much it. Well, I'm going to call it a day for today's stream because I really want to play. Uh, I, I bought a steering wheel on like Wednesday, like a proper gaming steering wheel, but I hadn't had a chance to play it and it's Sunday. So I really want to give it a go. Um, so, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed the stream. It helps when you have something. Just... Yeah, it's because it like keeps like them sharp, I guess. Right. It tells it how much it needs to subdivide. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed the stream. We've lost viewers anyway, so I think it's a good time to stop. Um and I'll catch you guys. Maybe tomorrow I have the day off. So it depends how I feel. If I want to do some more progress on the scene, I will. But yeah, otherwise, I'll catch you guys next Friday. Bye-bye.